Istanbul, Turkey, estimated to have a population of 15 million. The city straddles the Bosphorus Strait, lying in both Europe and Asia. Named a European capital of culture and the eighth most visited city in the world. Istanbul has a remarkable history that spans over 2,600 years. It was founded as Byzantium in 657 BC, became Constantinople in 330 AD when it became the capital of the Roman Empire, leaving behind a blend of diverse architecture and traditions. Istanbul beckons with a rich tapestry of history and culture, a mecca for traditional Turkish food. Join us on a journey through Istanbul's bustling streets, spectacular mosques, bazaars and street markets and explore the present day charm of this captivating metropolis. This is What's Next with Myra and Danny and Istanbul awaits your discovery. So we've just landed in Istanbul. I'm so excited. We flew with Turkish Airlines and it was such a nice flight. We had food as well for only a two hour journey. So I was quite happy with that. And we had so much space, such a nice airline. And then as you come into the airport, it's also a very large airport. So you have to walk at least 15 minutes to get to the metro. Also, we are quite lucky because it's not that hot. It's actually very, very pleasant. Thank God, because we've checked the weather like a week ago and Istanbul was boiling with like 35 degrees. So yeah, we're excited to hit the town and enjoy Istanbul. Hello, sir. Where do I um, get my ticket from? So we didn't actually find this cat to be too helpful. And then this was the start of a very confusing relationship with public transport. Throughout our trip, we were struggling with the ticket machines and we were not ready for the crazy culture of being shoved onto the trams either. We opted for public transport our whole trip and we hopefully saved a lot of money. And sometimes the traffic was so bad that it was fine to get the tram. But you basically buy a city card and you can use the same one for two people and you can keep topping it up but it is so stressful since most of the machines were not working and they weren't accepting certain banknotes and we also had someone scam us at one point and we should have known better but he kind of withdrew the money after the transaction because we couldn't change it to English so just be aware of that. These cars as well don't get reused, so you just throw them away and they're plastic. Anyway, back to the vlog. So we planned this trip to Istanbul a few months ago. It's my birthday and we wanted to come somewhere with great food. So we're on our way to Sultanic Met where we'll be staying for the next five days. The journey from the airport actually took us basically one and a half hours with three trains and it was exhausting, but we managed to get to our hotel safe and sound in the end. <laughs> First impression, Dad. <laughs> First impressions before I get chopped in the lift. So we have checked into the hotel. It's called the Flower Palace Hotel. It's nothing special, but it was the budget that we had. It's cost. Yeah, around 50 euro per night. Which isn't bad. And it's in the perfect location. So we've just gotten ready now and we're going to go for a little mooch around the area that we're in and then we're gonna go to this lovely fish restaurant that Danny found. In a few hours we have a reservation at this place called Fish Home Cafe and we can't wait to have some nice food. We're actually starving. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> We would later try this handmade dough. It's a specialty in Turkey called gosleme and it's been cooked for centuries. We would always see it made by older women in these restaurants and supposedly it's passed down through generations to the women in the family. This thin dough is then stuffed with different fillings like spinach and cheese and then it's folded and cooked on a griddle until it's really golden and crispy. It tastes so good. Our plan for the rest of the evening 
was quite basic, but we did really want to visit first the Sultanat Mek Square, which is just this central hub for tourists and locals to just congregate and relax. And so within the square, there is the two mosques that face opposite each other. And within there's this beautiful preserved area with palm trees and benches to come and sit at. And within there, there's of course the street food stalls and everyone's just taking selfies on their camera. But although it was quite busy, there was still a general sense of calm. We were so hungry that we had to get one of the corn on the cobs and we went for one charred and then one boiled one. It smelled so good and it tasted even better. The corn is actually so good. It's 25 Turkish lira, which is a little bit less than a euro. And then picking the corn from our teeth, we headed towards our restaurant for our first Turkish dinner of the trip. There's so much activity around the mosques. Aside from all the queues of people trying to enter both the mosques, it's very touristy, but it's also a really nice area to explore. It's my first beer in two weeks. So we come to the fish home, Ahir Kapi. Had a lot of reviews on Google and we're sitting outside. It's really beautiful here. There's a lot of cats crawling underneath the table. We are waiting for our main and we just had some bread and some soup. But we've ordered a lot of fish. It's like a lentil soup. Oh, thank you. Oh, deep fried. Those for us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the potato as well. So the food has just arrived, and we have like a massive platter of prawns and fish, and then there's like half of a baked potato in the middle. I like it because I'm British. And then we've got like a sizzling tray of a prawn. What was it called? Casserole. Casserole. And then we, of course we have the French fries, and then just a green salad. We would finish off the meal with a traditional Turkish tea and baklava and then we went to explore a nearby bazaar called Arasta Bazaar which is an open air shopping street with beautiful, unique, well lit shops selling traditional fabrics from Istanbul. There's also herbs and spices, clothing, rugs and jewellery. Throw this bowl in the tea and then you leave it there for like a few minutes and then the bowl opens up as a flower. <laughs> and this is before we would start our hunt for our last mission of the day, which is to find a shisha bar. Good morning, so it's our first full day. Today is going to be quite busy, so we're going to go to visit the Blue Mosque first, then have some breakfast and then visit Hagia Sophia as well. Stay tuned. So we're now in Sultan Ahmed Square, which is the old town here in Istanbul. And 
This area is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site and you can really feel the history from the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire. You have these two mosques looking one in front of each other and it's just really magical, I think. So the first thing we're gonna visit is the Blue Mosque, which opens at half eight. So we're just trying to kill some time and visit the square, which today in the morning is quite empty and nice. Yesterday evening was very packed and very chaotic. So one of the most interesting things about the Blue Mosque is all these hand-painted tiles, which has this blue and red color and golden, so it's really beautiful. Okay, I lost Maya somewhere. We managed to visit the Blue Mosque in like around half an hour and now we're walking towards Hagia Sophia. Hopefully we will manage to enter because we can already see the queue, it's huge. Five minutes later. So the queue is actually very, very big and long. So we decided to just go to have breakfast instead. We're gonna be probably visiting Hagia Sophia on our last day. We came to a place called My Terrace Cafe and Restaurant and we're having our first Turkish breakfast. Obviously the scenes on the table are pretty full right now. We've basically got a mixture of like olives, breads, we've both got an omelette to eat. Then we have dishes that we don't know what they are, lots of cheeses and lots of fruits and vegetables. My favourite of course is always bread with some cheese on top. They have this cheese which is like Sort of feta, but not as sour. So good. Very buttery. It's basically a combination of eggs and vegetables. Sort of like a shakshuka style, but the eggs are like scrambled. So nice. And also, whilst we sat on this terrace, it's quite high, so it's a little bit windy. But we have the most amazing view over the sea. It's just literally the most stunning place I've ever eaten breakfast at. So we are done with breakfast now and gonna get the tram and go back to the hotel quickly. And then we are gonna explore the Galata area. So we're quite excited for that. The weather is also quite good. A little bit windy that keeps you quite cool, but very sunny as well. The Galata Bridge is what connects the land between an inlet of water called the Golden Horn, which divides the city of Istanbul. It connects the neighbourhoods of Eminonu and Karakoy on the southern side of Istanbul, where we'll visit later in our vlog. You can walk across the bottom of the bridge where you can eat in the floating restaurants, serving the famous grilled mackerel sandwich called Balik Ekmek, which we'll also try later. You can also walk on top where there's this amazing view of the city and so many fishermen all casting their lines and some of them had buckets full of sardines and we were wondering if they sell their catch to the local restaurants below. So we're now in the Galata area and we're walking towards the Galata Tower which is quite uphill so it's quite steep. We're not sure whether we're going to go up the tower because we know that it is around 25 euros each and we could already see from far back when we were on the bridge that there was tons of people around the top of the tower so yeah we're not sure about the queue once again just like the mosque yeah surely the queue is huge because i remember 
when I was here like five, six years ago. The queue was massive and I actually been on top. And yeah, the view is good. It's not very high up, so you don't really have this panoramic view. Okay, so we are at the Galata Tower now. And as we thought, there is quite a big queue, not as big as in the other attractions like Hagia Sophia this morning, but still there is lots of people in the queue. And then there is another queue for you to get the ticket beforehand and then you can enter. So we needed to stop for a little break and we need probably a coffee. So we've come to Federal Australian Coffee Company. And we're gonna have like an ice drink before we explore the Galata area. So I think me and Maya, we deserve some shopping now. And that is why we're going to Istikal Kadesi, which is the main shopping street. And we want to see if there is something nice there. So Istikal Kadesi is this main shopping street. It's in the Galata area and it brings you all the way towards Taksim Square, which is also our next stop. So in the meantime, we're going to try to see if there is something nice in the shop. If you can actually save some money, given that the Turkish Lira depreciated quite a lot. Five minutes later. So we're a little bit shopped out now. We are approaching Taksim Square because we're on our way to a very special kebab place called Durum Zaid, which was recommended by one of our favorite YouTubers, Lost LeBlanc. So we'll show you what it's like. So this place is also special because Anthony Bourdain was here once. So we have high expectations about this kebab. We ordered classic kebab, which has the combination of lamb meat and beef. Yeah. And then I ordered like kebab platter with chicken breast. So let's stay also healthy a little bit. <coughs> you can clearly see that it was grilled on a skewer. Then there is like a hole now. It's basically like chicken breast marinated in bits like that. It has like a kick to it, so I can taste like chili, paprika, and cumin, so it's really nice and juicy. Oh my God. So we're out for the evening. We are just strolling around near where our hotel is. We are gonna head into Topkapi Gardens. We'll have a little walk around and then find somewhere nice for dinner. We must say it's very difficult to find like areas of calm because we are struggling a bit with the crowds. So for example, we did just get a tram and it was absolutely packed. No one lets anyone off. Everyone's like cramming in and it's pretty stressful. So it's really nice when you find open, less busy areas. But man, Istanbul is so busy. It's insane. Okay, so tonight we came to a traditional clay pot restaurant, which basically they cook the meat inside the clay pots and then they come to your table and they open the clay pots and they pour the meat that has been cooking inside. So it's supposedly it should be like nice and juicy, but we actually didn't order the one that comes closed in a clay pot. We ordered the one that are cooked to this flat clay pots. So basically the dish comes to your table very, very hot and the meat keeps cooking inside this very hot clay pot. So the starters have arrived. We went for a meze plate with all different dips and then we also went for this boat so this dish is kind of like a pizza but it's folded in on itself and it's from the historical part of Istanbul where boats invaded <laughs> so this is called pita it's basically like a pizza kind of like a ciabatta style actually but they're very crispy cooked in the clay oven stone oven we just went for the one with the melted cheddar cheese inside. Well cheesy. Mm. 
Now, of course, no evening would be complete without baklava and tea on a rooftop, even if it was very windy and quite cold. And we tried something we'd seen on the menu with all the desserts, which is like baklava, but it has a melted cheese filling. I would not like it at all since it wasn't sweet and it wasn't what I expected. So Danny was forced to finish it all and then we retired back to our flower palace for bed. Stay tuned for day three and four when we cross with the ferry to Besiktas and Karakoy on the south side. We also visit the Grand Bazaar and the famous colourful streets of Feyerbala, all in part two of our Istanbul vlog.